Do you have elbow pain? It could be a condition called olecranon bursitis. Keep watching to learn more. Olecranon bursitis is a condition that affects the bursa, which is a sac of fluid that's found on the back of your elbow. The purpose of your bursa is to decrease friction between different soft tissue layers found, namely at the triceps region. Bursitis refers to the inflammation of your bursa. So olecranon bursitis is your olecranon bursa experiencing inflammation. It's really important to understand that the number one cause of olecranon bursitis is actually infective bursitis, which actually needs medical attention. The purpose of this video is for mechanical olecranon bursitis, not infectious olecranon bursitis. So if you have infectious or infective olecranon bursitis, please see your medical doctor to get that treated with medicine. Typically, olecranon bursitis is a repetitive overload of the structures in and around the olecranon bursa. Namely, it has to do with the triceps and the triceps tendon. It's really typical that those who experience olecranon bursitis to have been starting a strength training or any type of activity that scaled up more quickly than the body was able to recover from. This usually happens in people who are new to exercise or who all of a sudden increase the volume of their exercise way too rapidly. This can include those who are starting a calisthenics program where there is a heavy emphasis on doing dips and push-ups. It could be in those who are starting out a weight training program where there's a heavy emphasis on triceps strengthening and bench press exercises. It could also be in those who are just starting to play uh, certain sports that do emphasize a lot of elbow extension. This could be any type of racket sport, for example. It's really important to recognize that if this this is something that happened to you that you do start to manage your activity levels, just potentially lowering them to a point where your body can keep up with recovering and also giving your body an opportunity to rest enough so that you could do your rehab exercises. With olecranon bursitis, you can feel pain with elbow extension, which is really activating the triceps muscle because a heavy activation of this muscle will compress this inflamed bursa. This means anything that will cause a triceps to extend, you're pulling through like a triceps pull down, or any of those exercises I named earlier can cause pain. Because the bursa itself is inflamed, it can also be very tender to touch, which means that if you're leaning on that elbow, it can also be quite painful. Last but not least, because the bursa is being compressed when the triceps is stretched, any type of deep elbow flexion could also trigger some pain in the back of your elbow. Because this is an inflammatory injury, pain could also increase at night when you're going to bed and can feel particularly worse when you wake up in the morning. And this is because the body's natural inflammation cycle occurs most at nighttime because that's when your body is trying to recover. Pain can also linger for a few hours after you completed any type of physical activity. And this is again, because any type of inflammation might be temporarily increased. Recovering from this condition can take anywhere between two to three months. It really depends on how well you can manage your activity levels outside of the rehab program. If you're really pushing through and really trying to do a lot of excessive exercise, that can delay your recovery period. At the same time, doing complete rest will also delay your recovery period because what it'll do is once you've exposed yourself to the exercise once again because no conditioning or strengthening happened in the elbow the pain will just get triggered again so today we'll be going over some exercises that focus on mobility and flexibility of the triceps muscle we'll also be going over strength and conditioning exercises for that triceps that will occur later in the rehab program so let's get started all right, so the first exercise that we'll be doing is a self-massage for your triceps. Now, it's really important that we're not putting this ball right on your bursa directly because any type of compression on your olecranon bursa can be quite painful and make things a little too spicy, okay? The goal is not to pummel your triceps muscle, it's just to lightly massage them out so that they can decrease the amount of pressure that they're playing on the bursa. So when we're taking a look at the triceps muscle here, we're not really going to be targeting this lower inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches if you have longer limbs, because that's where the bursa tends to be located. This is also where your triceps tendon is. So instead, we'll be targeting the muscle belly of your triceps. Now, when you're doing this exercise, it's also important to recognize that your triceps muscle isn't a flat structure, it is cylindrical, right? Your arm arm is a pillar. So when you're doing this massage, you can target different angles by rotating the arm and I'll show you what I mean right now. When you're doing this exercise, it's also really helpful to have a flat surface. I'm going to be using an exercise bench, but you could use literally anything. You could 
use your thigh, you can use a desk at home, anything that'll just kind of hold the ball in place for you. I'll be sitting on the floor because that's just the height that is most comfortable when using an exercise bench. I'll be placing this ball right onto the belly of my triceps muscle. And you can start up towards the shoulder and work your way down towards the elbow, stopping about two inches short of actually going to your elbow bone here. So for me, I'm just going to place this ball and sandwich it between my arm and the bench. And right now, I'm only really aiming for about a five or six out of 10 massage intensity. If you need a little bit more weight, you could just lean into it more or just use your other hand to compress your arm into the ball. From here, you're going to just do these soft elbow extensions and elbow flexions. And what you'll do is notice how the muscle is just flossing over top that massage ball. And you'll find that the tenderness level will change as you move your arm dynamically. When you're doing this, you're only going to be aiming for about six to eight of these elbow bends and make sure you're not doing them way too quickly because you don't want your muscle to spaz out. After about six to eight repetitions, you can just roll the ball to another location, find a tender spot, and then repeat. As I mentioned earlier, you will have to sometimes, because of the cylindrical shape of your arm, rotate your arm a little bit inwards or a little bit outwards to find a really good, nice and tender spot. You can find multiple tender spots along that triceps muscle group, but it's really important that you're not over massaging your muscle and you can over massage by repeating the same spot more than once. So it's really important that once we get started, we're really just moving one direction so that we avoid the mistake of massaging the same spot twice. When it comes to doing the self-massage exercise, it's really important that you're giving your muscle a day of rest in between exercise sessions. This means that you won't be doing this every single day. You'll be doing it at most every other day within a week. That means you're only going to do this a maximum dosage of three times a week. And this is really important because the main benefits from this exercise comes from recovering from the massage session. It doesn't come from the massage itself. So while it might feel feel good to massage it out daily, you might actually be delaying your recovery process. It's really important that you give muscles the rest that they need so that they can feel better long term, not just in the moment. Up next, we'll be going into another exercise to increase the flexibility of your triceps. The next exercise that we'll be doing in the phase one recovery process is just your very basic tricep stretch. A lot of you might have even tried this in the past if you've ever done a gym class in elementary school, but here it is. All you wanna do is raise your arm up above the head, place the arm behind your body, take your other hand, you're just gonna pull that elbow towards your head, you're gonna feel that stretch in this triceps region. Now it's really important, and this is where it becomes really individualized or individual specific, is that you're not gonna be pulling it to the point where you're triggering that pain in the elbow. If you're feeling that pain in the elbow, just don't pull so hard. So when you're doing this, I'm just gonna be pulling enough to appreciate a light stretch in my triceps region, and I'm gonna be holding the stretch for about 30 seconds. You could do anywhere between two to three repetitions, making sure to give that muscle a 30 to 60 second break in between each set that you do. This exercise, unlike the massage exercise that we just finished, is to be done daily. You could do this once or twice a day. So you could do those three sets separated, you know, morning, after your night, or you could do them all at once with a minute of rest in between. It's really up to you and what feels best for you and your elbow. Up next, we'll be going into our phase two exercises, which is active mobility of the triceps. During phase one, that phase can last anywhere between two to four weeks. It really just depends on how consistent you are with the exercise and how severe your condition was to begin with. You could try to transition into the phase two exercises that we're going to be doing right now as soon as they feel comfortable to do. So you won't really know until you test it out a little bit to see if they feel comfortable. If they don't yet, go back to the phase one exercises, do it for another week and come back to this phase two program. So the first exercise that we'll be doing today is called beer pong extension and it does require a light pull up assist band. This is the standard red one that's rated anywhere between 15 to 25 pounds. You'll also do this exercise at a cable pulley machine set up at a similar height and angle. So I'm going to be setting this up just around head height, plus or minus a few inches or feet. It's fine to do. It really just depends how comfortable it is for you. I'm going to be grabbing the band in a neutral kind of grip here, and I'm going to be setting it up so that the band anchor is directly behind me. For this exercise, I'm going to allow the band to pull my elbow into as much uh, flexion as I can tolerate. So this is my full range here. For many of you, this might be a little bit too sensitive or painful, so it's okay to take a step back so that you're starting mid-range. And then as you progress 
week to week, you go a little bit deeper and deeper by just stepping forwards with this exercise. But because my elbow is healthy, I'll just show you what the full range looks like. You could be standing with your feet hip distance apart, or you could just be standing with a split stance. It really just depends on which feels more comfortable for you. To get started, you want to make sure that you're keeping your elbow fixated in place as if there's like a pin in it, keeping it here. So I'm not going to be moving my elbow back and forth. I'm mostly just hinging up my elbow and moving my hand up and down. To get started, I'm just going to extend my elbows until it's fully straight, gaining maximal contraction of the triceps uh, muscle. Again, because this does pull on the triceps tendon, it will cause some compression of the olecanon bursa. If you find this full range is a little bit too painful, just don't go the full range. You can stop a few degrees short of reaching that full range, just working within your comfortable range. If you have a shortened range, it might just look like a few degrees of movement, but because I have a healthy triceps and a healthy olecranon uh, bursa, I can go the full range here. When you're doing this exercise, it's important to stick to a one to two second tempo. So you're not trying to do rapid fire repetitions here. We're just trying to do a nice slow controlled activation so that your triceps and the triceps tendon gets used to stretching in a deep flexion position and activating out of it appropriately. When it comes to repetitions and sets that you'll be doing anywhere between eight to 15 repetitions is great, but you don't have to hit those numbers. If the exercise is a little bit too difficult, you could do less repetitions, even if it means you're only doing three or four repetitions. If that's all you got for today, that's all you got. That's okay, rest up, try a few more on your next set and go on from there. When it comes to how many sets you're doing, anywhere between two to three sets is really great to do. But again, if you can't do three sets because it becomes a little bit too tender or painful, just stop at two, that's completely fine. You build this body up step by step, day by day. Because we're doing this active mobility exercise and it does cause some contraction of your triceps muscle, you will be only be doing this exercise about three times a week or every other day, similar to the massage. We want to make sure we give it a day of rest for it to recover from the exercise that we just did. When it comes to rest periods between sets, you could rest anywhere between a minute to a minute and a half. You can take a little longer if needed just to make that next set a little bit less painful. All right, let's get started with our next exercise. The second exercise we'll be doing is a banded tricep extension with emphasis on trying to introduce end ranges to your elbow. So first thing you're going to do is you grab a pull-up assist band. You can use a regular TheraBand as well if you have that's the only option you have. Same with the last exercise, it doesn't have to be a pull-up assist band. You can use any band as long as it's long enough. So first things first, I'm going to just step on one edge of this band and then I'm going to raise my arm completely straight up. From here, I'm gonna let that band pull my arm down behind me. Now, once again, your end ranges might be a little painful because of the lecronon being inflamed. So just don't let the band pull it as far down as it would cause pain. We wanna to stick to relatively pain-free ranges bit of discomfort is a-okay. It's just the pain that we want to try to avoid if we can. Similar to the beer pong extensions that we just completed, we're mostly focusing on trying to reach those end ranges. But if the end ranges are too painful or sensitive for you to reach, just shorten the range and work with what you got. So I'm going to show you what full range looks like. Right now I'm in full flexion. I can't really go further than this. And I'm just going to be extending my elbow until my elbow is pretty much locked out and my fist is pointing towards the ceiling here. If this range is a little bit too painful, it's okay to just go partial range here and then just coming back down to a partial range as well and just working through that range of motion but since i have full range this is what it looks like for this exercise the reps and sets will be just like the last exercise that we did let's now move on to the phase three exercises now that we've completed phase two of our exercise program, we should have full elbow flexion and extension that is pain-free when unloaded. Now it's time to add a little bit of lightweight so that we can tolerate a little bit of stress on our elbow in our daily lives. So we're gonna be doing an exercise called the Dumbbell Skull Crusher, and I'm gonna be using just a five pound dumbbell to get started today. You can pick a weight that feels comfortable for you. The main goal here is to start with a weight that you can do full range and increase the weight as you find that the exercise gets easier and easier. For this exercise, I like to aim for anywhere between a six out of 10 exercise difficulty while I'm still trying to do pain-free repetitions. It might take eight to 10 weeks before you get to this phase of the exercise program. It just really depends on how it feels leading up to it in phase one and phase two of this program. It's also important to realize that you don't have to have the ability to do a full set of repetitions before you start to introduce some of this into your day. If things are still progressing a little slowly in phase two, it's okay okay to do just like three to four reps per set of this exercise so long it feels comfortable just so you can start exposing your elbow to a bit of strength 
and conditioning. In general, for this phase of the program, since we are trying to do some strengthening of the triceps and the tendon, we are going to be aiming for anywhere between 10 to 15 repetitions, and we're gonna be aiming for about three sets. It's really important to recognize that since we're doing a strengthening program, we are going to up the rest required between each set. So we're going to be aiming for about a minute and a half to two minutes of rest between each set. This is really important because mentally we're going to feel ready to do the next set a little early, but honestly just take the rest because you're going to be able to perform a little bit better for your next set. And that performance for that set is what really is going to cause some good changes into the muscle and tendons being affected around in and around that lecranon brissa. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to complete this uh, skull crusher exercise. First thing you need is a weight. And the second thing you need is something like an exercise bench. But honestly, Honestly, this can be completed on the floor with a yoga mat as we don't really need to lower our arms below body height. So I'm gonna get started here by lying down on my back onto the bench and I'm gonna raise my elbow so that my shoulder forms about a 90 degree angle with my torso here, okay? I'm gonna just take my other hand and use that for a bit of extra stability for that upper arm. But if you can manage just holding this without the assistance of your other arm, that's fine to do as well. Once I'm set up, I'm just going to be bending my elbow maximally. So I'm gonna let that weight pull my hand down as far as possible. And once I get to that end range, I'm once again going to extend my elbow, straighten it out completely. You should feel the muscles of the back of your arm, aka your triceps, feeling the activation and contraction. And once again, at this point of the program, the movement should be pain-free. You might feel some discomfort or pressure in and around the back of your elbow. That's okay to work through, so long as it's not that achy, inflammatory type of pain that you have been feeling up to this point. If you find that you're able to hit 15 repetitions comfortably and less than a six out of 10 difficulty, it's an indication that you can start to increase the weight. Now it's really important that you don't increase the weight tremendously. We're not going to double the weight. So if you're using a five pound weight, we're not going to go to 10 pounds right away. Try to find access to a seven and a half if possible. But if you have no choice and the 10 pounds of all that you've got, we're going to cut down the number of repetitions that you're aiming for for that first set by half. And this is because we want to make sure we're taking control of the volume. And we're not increasing that volume too rapidly because that's how this injury happened in the first place. Up next, we're going to be doing a modified push-up so that we can also still put some more strength into that elbow in its deep end ranges. The last exercise that we'll be doing in this program is going to be an uh, elevated knee push-up. And again, the emphasis of this exercise should be putting some strengthening component into your end ranges. So if you can manage to do a full push-up or a grounded knee push-up, by all means, go into that. But we're going to start things off a little easy and then you can progress as needed when things get a little bit too easy. So I'll be using an exercise mat. You can use a yoga mat and I'm going to be using an exercise bench. You can use any stabilized chair, couch, you name it, as long as it won't shift or slide away from you. From here, just starting from my knees, I'm just going to be lowering my body so that my chest touches the bench and I'm going to be up bending my elbows completely in order to do so. From here, I'm going to just push back up. Now again, the main emphasis should be trying to get a deep elbow bend. You can find that you could get a deeper elbow bend. If you bring your hands closer together, you'll find that you could get into a deeper elbow bend. So doing more of a military push-up, which stress out that triceps tendon and triceps muscle and they're looking on burst out a little bit more. But if you're finding that a little bit too difficult, you can go wider with your hand placement and then this will change it into a more shallow angle movement. Once again, if you can, you could touch the bench by just doing it on the floor instead and just doing a military push-up from there. The phase three of your recovery program can last anywhere between four to six weeks. It really depends on what level you're trying to build your elbow up to because to be quite honest, for daily needs, your elbow is probably not gonna be in pain, but you might notice some discomfort when you start to challenge it in different athletic or performance movements, like doing a bench press in the gym. So if you're looking to kind of progress and getting back into the gym, start your weightlifting or weight training activities again, it can take a little bit longer to build that back up. Luckily at this point, Aside from doing the rehab strengthening exercise that I just showed you, you can start to do any of your regular strengthening exercises at this point, just at a lower volume and a lower intensity than what you're typically used to or what typically led up to you getting injured in the first place. Now, it's important to remember that just because we were able to reach our phase three exercises, that you don't have to completely ditch the exercises in phase one or two. You can still use some of those exercises to prime up the elbow before 
before you do the weight training based exercises. It can help to alleviate some of the symptoms that you're feeling while you're still trying to do some strength training. So if doing a bit of triceps massage helps you to do a little bit more weightlifting, then by all means go for it so long as it doesn't flare things up once you've completed the exercises. All right, everyone, that sums up our video on mechanical electronomicitis. If you haven't seen a healthcare practitioner yet, it's still highly recommended to see one. This video does not replace an assessment with your healthcare provider. It's really important that you get a medical opinion on what's going on with your elbow before you try to do any of these exercises on your own. If you're in the GTA, you can see one of the healthcare practitioners at Rehab Hero. We have a clinic in Markham and we have one in North York. Otherwise, try to find a highly rated therapist or clinician near you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you don't already follow the channel, please hit subscribe. Every single subscription helps the channel tremendously. Until then, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.